Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shelby and today we have something pretty interesting to talk about and something that is not often talked about. Although I highly think that it should be. Let's get started. So first off, did you notice my new t-shirt? Uh-huh, cause uh, George won the national championship this year and I got all the t-shirts. <laughs> Actually, my husband got me all the t-shirts, but I still pretty excited about that. It's been a long time. We were due, we were due. Okay, so back to business. So this topic, there's a lot to cover here. I probably won't even be able to address half of it because there's so much and it can, you can go so in depth with everything that we're gonna discuss while at the same time not, because a lot of what we, we are going to discuss really hasn't been studied that well. First off, I am not a doctor. Everything in this video is coming from my own personal studies and my own personal experience with this. I have had seizures since I was 14, so almost 15 years now, and I have a lot of experience with them. I've been to a lot of doctors and unfortunately, actually, not one of them in 15 years worth of seizures and 15 years worth of doctors have ever mentioned anything related to this subject, which is unfortunate and a real misstep, for lack of better, better terms, because it's kind of a big thing and it has really affected me and I just had to figure it out on my own. So. I guess the fact that I'm not a doctor is why I'm talking to you about this, which is unfortunate. So the base question here is, is there a connection between seizure activity and sex hormones? The answer is yes, very much so actually. Sex hormones can affect the excitability of the nerve cells in our brain, which then influences our ability to control seizures. You don't want your nerve cells excited. They are better off, and you are better off if they're more level, chill, if you will. The connection between sex hormones and seizure activity is why a lot of women will see either changes in their seizure cycles, or their seizures will begin at the time of puberty. That's what happened to me. I, I was right in between 14, 15, and out of nowhere, seizures were just like, hey, and they've stuck around since then. Changes in seizure frequency in relation to menstrual cycles is a condition called catamenial epilepsy. I might be pronouncing catamenial wrong, nicknamed CE for short. Many women with epilepsy, especially CE, will experience a higher rate of seizures during the very beginning of their period. This is thought to be because of an extremely rapid drop in progesterone, which results in a higher level of estrogen. Progesterone is thought to be a good hormone in terms of seizures. It is thought that progesterone protects you from having seizures, while estrogen is kind of like the excitement hormone changes the nerve cells in your brain, makes them more excited, increases the risk for you to have a seizure. Some women, on the other hand, will experience seizures at the end of their period. Typically, this is seen in women who do not ovulate and naturally have a lower level of progesterone. And as if we weren't having enough fun already, it is possible that the amount of certain seizure medications in the bloodstream could decrease before your period. So before your period, your medication may, it's not proven in a study yet, become less effective. Goody. Okay, so yay. A 2003 study found that, and I quote, 
going to be reading it over here. Several mechanisms responsible for a catamial pattern of seizures in epileptic women have been proposed. These mechanisms include, but are not limited to, changes in estrogen-progesterone ratio, progesterone withdrawal, changes in water content, bloating, fluctuations in calcium levels, interactions of anticonvulsant drugs, and steroid hormones, thyroid hormone deficiency, and many other factors which have not been addressed by previous studies. So what they're saying is there's an incredibly long list of things that could potentially affect us women during our period and result in a higher level of seizures. What they're also saying is they have not been addressed in previous studies. Maybe they'll be addressed in future studies, but as of right now, we really haven't looked into it too much. And this is not me bas bashing researchers because if a, a researcher, a scientist, a doctor showed up at my door and was like, hey, you have seizures and we need to know more about them. So what we're gonna do is we need to use you as a test subject and put all these things into your body and, and run you through all these tests to see which one results in seizures, okay? Does that sound good? Like who, who in their right mind is gonna be like, yeah, yeah, you should just put me through hell and, and I'll have tons of seizures during the testing and, and we'll have lots of, lots of fun. No. So it's not really a surprise that we don't have a lot of information here. In most of the studies that I read, the test subjects are always either rats or mice. There's not a lot of humans volunteering for this, this uh, testing, and I really can't blame them. With that said, in all of these studies, they mentioned the importance of keeping track of your triggers, especially during your menstrual cycle. So things such as mismedication, loss of sleep, unusual fatigue, intense physical training, stress or illness. Those are some of the higher ones that they, they've listed that are important to keep an eye on. So like if you're training, it's really intense, you don't feel good, maybe take it easy for that day. The odds of you having a seizure are a little bit higher. And if you didn't already watch it, go back to my video. It was, it went live at January 31st, I believe. That video goes more in depth about common seizure triggers. So, what about the non-period related sex hormones affected seizures? So seizures outside of your period that are affected by your sex hormones. This is something as a woman that I found very exciting. It has been found that women with epilepsy have an increased risk of early onset menopause. Yay! This is another thing that I'm reading from the, the study. Depending on seizure frequency, an estimated lifetime number of seizures, menopause in women with ep epilepsy occurs as early as around age 40. Yippee! Let's keep going. Oh, even more fun. Still reading from the study. I read a lot of studies. A 1999 study found that 40% of women with epilepsy reported worsening of their seizures after menopause. Whoopee! Some had new onset seizures, which makes a lot of sense because menopause is kind of like your second puberty in life, except backwards. So it, it makes a little bit of sense. You have a lot of sex hormone changes at that time. On the plus side, there's hope. There's hope for us out there, don't worry. 18% of women reported better seizure control after menopause. This has to do with the relationship of progesterone to estrogen. So while some people see it work, get worse, other people have it get better. So it's kind of just a wait, wait and see sort of thing. Although most women saw it get worse. There is a chance, there's a hope. Don't worry. So moral of the story, 
the underlying mechanisms for the various findings in how sex hormones affect seizures is still widely unknown. What we know is that both estrogen and progesterone can delay the onset of seizures. However, progesterone does have more powerful anticonvulsant properties and it has produced more consistent effects of controlling the severity of seizures. So to answer the question, do sex hormones affect epilepsy? Yes. Do we know everything? No. Is there a higher rate, a higher risk of you having a seizure a few days before your period, a few days into your period, maybe at the end of your period, uh, especially for women who don't ovulate? Yes. Is there a chance that your seizure medication is not as effective before and during the first few days of your period? Also yes. What can we do about it? It's hard because there's not a whole lot, but you gotta take control of your seizures. You have to know about them, know what could cause them, and play the day and the week cautiously until you've made it to that that amazing place where you are done with your period. I hope you've been able to take something from this video. I hope that you were able to learn something and apply it to your own life, apply it to your own seizures, apply it to your own menstrual cycles. I hope you'll have an absolutely wonderful day, absolutely wonderful week, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!